Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Chief Executive Officer, Juniper Networks, Rami Rahim. Nineteen eighty four. This was an iconic book, a powerful film, and the inspiration of an Apple ad that until today remains relevant and resonant with me. What we feared as a society in nineteen eighty four is in many ways what we fear today a future where we are not in control a future where we are subservient to an authoritarian force, be it AI, cyber criminals, or Big Brother, cyber criminals that want to manipulate our systems, our institutions, and our media, that want to disrupt the stability of life as we know it today. Take away all of the code words, the buzzwords, the rhetoric, the acronyms, and this is why I believe 50,000 of the best and brightest from Silicon Valley and around the world are here today in San Francisco. It is our job to throw the hammer. It is my job as CEO of Juniper Networks to make sure that we are focused on our mission, whether that be to scale the internet, to transform the economics of networking, or to just to battle complexity of operating worldwide networks. We solve really important, but really hard problems at Juniper. But if I were a novelist, and I were to write a book like George Orwell, a futurist, I'd write about a future where technology has progressed to the point where it has disrupted what it means to be civilized, what it means to be human. Take robotics and artificial intelligence where today, leading scientists from around the world have warned us of the unchecked development of these technologies. You remember that robot, Spot Mini? That robot that loves to open doors? Well, here's Spot Mini fending off a human from trying to prevent it from doing what it does best, open doors. Now, I don't know about you, I am a technologist through and through, but I find something somewhat creepy about this. At South by Southwest again this year, Elon Musk warned us that it would be AI and not nuclear weapons that would pose a dire threat to the survival of the human species. You can even add the late Stephen Hawking, who said that success in creating AI would be the biggest event in human history. Unfortunately, it might be the last unless we learn how to contain the risks that are involved. Now, I suspect a few in this audience today have seen the series Black Mirror. I suspect many of you have. I recently binged it myself. And there were a few episodes that really struck a note with me, but there was one in particular that I have to say hit home, and that is Hated in the Nation. It touched on the very real consequences of online social media mob justice. It also touched on the vulnerability of technology, a topic that's very near and dear to my heart. Technology that, that many of us here are responsible for building, for maintaining, and for securing. Technology that was developed with the intent to do good, to solve a real and a meaningful problem that affects our society. Technology that unfortunately is exploited by those who want to do harm, who want to steal. And in this episode, and I apologize in advance for the spoiler, a swarm of drone bees are developed to solve a very real problem, which is to compensate for a dwindling real bee population that today is responsible for pollinating some 70 out of the 100 crop species that feed our planet. Well, you guessed it. A flaw in the technology is exploited by the bad guys to wreak havoc. Technology that was developed to do good is used to terrorize the people of Britain, 
where victims are targeted with nothing more than a social media hashtag. And just when you think things can't get any worse, the writers devised an ingenious way to show that sometimes social media mob justice can turn on the mob itself. So whether it's AI or militarized social media or Big Brother, you don't have to look all that far into the future to think about and to understand the threats that we will face. This is 2018. Would George Orwell be proud? This vision of the future and what's happening all around us today is a stark reminder of our responsibility. Like many engineers that graduate from schools in Canada, I choose to wear this iron ring on my finger as a constant reminder of the moral, the ethical, and the professional responsibility that I have in the products and the technology and the solutions that I help to develop each and every day and introduce into the market each and every year. But why is this important? Well, many of us in this room help build the internet. On behalf of Juniper Networks, I can say very proudly that we help build the internet. We help create much of the routing, the switching, the security infrastructure that powers the wide area networks, the local area networks, the data centers, the core, that form the internet. The internet that has transformed how we shop, how we manufacture, transform how we do research, how we check if an ailment is serious, how we buy tickets to Black Panther. We've, in a sense, redefined the idea of connectedness. But it is that very connectedness that has unleashed unprecedented threats to our society. Threats that make an episode of Black Mirror look less like science fiction and more like forecasting. The reason is that the internet has unintentionally empowered criminals with three unfair advantages. It has eliminated time, eliminated distance, and it eliminated identity constraints that are typically associated with more traditional physical crimes. The speed and the ubiquity of the internet means that attacks can happen without warning, from any location, and with complete anonymity. In a sense, it's put the bad guy in your house in the middle of the night in complete disguise. You know, as I reflect on the last two decades, of the internet, and I look out two more decades. The factors that really determine the pace at which the internet can scale have been things like scalable routing protocols, or Moore's law that determines the number of transistors you can put on a die size of given size that move the packets around as quickly as possible. And certainly, these will remain important factors going forward. But I believe that the biggest factors that will determine the pace at which the internet can succeed over the next two decades will be that of complexity, and even more importantly, trust. Yes, there is a business dimension to the problems we solve at Juniper each and every day, but quite frankly, we take this personally. We need to, we must make sure that the internet continues to scale and to thrive as it has over the last two decades going forward. So where do we go from here? Unlike Orwell's 1984, I think my story can actually have a happy ending. We at Juniper believe that there is no societal challenge that is more complex than cybersecurity today. And against that complexity, we need purity of focus and simplicity of mission. So our call to action today is straightforward and it's simple. We need to be agents of change. Every one of us here at RSA needs to be an agent of change with the goal of evolving cybersecurity tools, technologies, and processes. But let's get more specific. Our mission is twofold. First and foremost, we must acknowledge that humans cannot keep up with the scale 
and the velocity at which data needs to be processed each and every day in order to, to create that effective threat shield. So we have to continue to develop the technology that improves and provides us with that threat shield that will keep us safe. I have good news. We're already building a fantastic foundation. You walk through the halls of RSA, and you will see some incredible technology in the domain of AI and machine learning and behavioral analytics. Today, one of the most effective ways to stop threats is to understand the underlying behavior of those threats with the goal of overcoming what is very typical malware techniques of constantly evolving and changing their packaging and their looks so that they could evade more traditional threat detection techniques. Well, that behavioral analysis and the lessons that is gained from that and then that dissemination of intelligence worldwide in near real time is one of the most compelling use cases for automation in our industry. But for some, automation is a bad word because of some misguided view that it has a negative effect on jobs. And we cannot, we must not allow ourselves to slow down. Automation is inevitable and it is good especially when it comes to cybersecurity. The cyber criminals that are out there are leveraging automation with fervor. We must make sure that we do not show up to a knife fight wearing boxing gloves. I believe that as automation continues to evolve, the collaboration between humans and machines becomes increasingly important. The goal is that the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. It's about the intelligence of machines coupled with the wisdom and the intuition of humans, which gives us three really compelling advantages or benefits. The first is retrospective analysis, which is nothing more than the ability to look back in time and understand what happened and why. The second is current analysis, which gives us an ability to eliminate threats early in the cyber kill chain. But the third and most important of all is predictive analysis, which is about leveraging AI and data to predict and prevent an attack before it actually happens. This one is worth repeating because this is the true power of AI. Artificial intelligence coupled with rich data gives us the ability to predict the future, to determine when a bad outcome is going to happen before it actually happens and before it can actually do harm. So like, like I said, I believe in a future where humans and machines will interna interact in unique and compelling ways. Consider the era just as an analogy of implantables. Today, we mostly think about human implantables as a way of compensating for a disability. But in the future, I believe in implantables will give us abilities that go far beyond our wildest imagination of what the human, the organic human body can do. Let's just look at a simple example of LASIK. Today, somebody who undergoes a simple LASIK procedure can hope to expect 2020, maybe 2010 vision. But that drop-down menu for LASIK will include things like telephoto zoom lenses, Infrared vision? How would you like 21 vision? Compare that to a hawk that has a measly 24, maybe 25 vision. And yet, as we lean into automation and emphasize the deeper collaboration that must exist between AI and humans, we must never lose sight of the importance of talent, of people of you, which brings us to the second mission for us as agents of change. We must recognize the singular, the critical element of human intelligence and importantly, human intuition. As agents of change, our responsibility is to make sure that we develop the next generation of human that can keep up with the challenge that we face. 
Why? Because there is no amount of AI that can, call, that can solve the problem holistically. So we have to make sure that our skill sets are continually expanding and adapting. Consider an auto mechanic in 1998 that has had to adapt his or her skill sets to become that of a computer analyst today, they have had to be agents of change in their profession, in their industry. We, quite frankly, have a human capital challenge today. There are not, there are not enough of us. We know this because the cybersecurity unemployment rate today is practically zero. And even in the face of this perceived threat of automation, there will be 2 million unfilled cybersecurity jobs in the next couple of years. And I know that might feel good to a cybersecurity professional from a job security standpoint, but standing still is just going backwards. So we need out-of-box thinking. We need unique, unique ideas to really solve this problem once and for all. And let me borrow one just as an example from former Undersecretary of Defense for Policy, Michelle Flournoy. She envisioned that we need a cyber ROTC, a Reserve Officers Training Corp. Now, for those of you that are not familiar with how an ROTC works, in a traditional ROTC, students on campus commit to training courses, and in return, they owe four years of active duty. As a result of that, the government pays for all or part of their tuition. In a cyber ROTC, as Michelle envisioned it, students in computer science compete for government scholarships. Those that are lucky enough to get those scholarships owe the government five years of service in a department of greatest requirement and at the end of those five years can decide to continue working in those agencies or competing for jobs in the private sector. Here's my bet. They'd find one pretty darn quickly. If we want to be agents of change and not agents of the status quo, these are the kinds of out-of-box thinking ideas that we need today, which is why Juniper is so excited about the investments that we are making and the recent announcements we've made in our really successful Open Lab initiative. So we're expanding the scope, the scale of our worldwide Open Labs facilities with curriculum, hands-on workshops, hackathons, throwdowns, all geared toward advancing the state of the art and techniques and solutions for today's and tomorrow's threats. We will continue to work with universities, with startups, with entrepreneurs, with the goal of creating that next generation cybersecurity professional and leader. And importantly, given the size, the scope of this challenge that we face, we have to make sure that we cast as wide a net as possible to 100% of the population, not just half of it, which is just one reason why diversity is so fundamental to this initiative. Let me take you back, all the way back to the beginning of my talk here. It was a machine playing Big Brother's message. It was a machine lecturing us. It was a machine keeping humans in mind-numbing conformity. It was a human throwing that sledgehammer. It was a human telling us that we had to do things differently and showing us that conformity is the enemy. Even a tech technology company, especially a technology company, knows that the human element is the most essential element. Humans must knock down the status quo, must break through. We must be agents of change. That Apple ad showed us that in a world where everything else has changed, those fundamental truths have not. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.